we've modeled the quad rotor rigid body mechanics gyroscopic effects of the rigid body and the propellers looked at the aerodynamics of the of the propellers themselves the electromechanics of the motor and now we're going to pull it all together and figure out how to fly this thing so following the lead of our primary reference paper which I continue to refer to and you'll see it in the blog it's our uh, referred to as the Bubadala paper because he looks to be the primary author, Samir Bubdala. I may be mispronouncing his name. We derived uh, similar equations or the same equations. And now we're to how we're going to control it. Now, ultimately, um, I'm interested in a number of control system problems associated with this platform, modeling the nonlinearities and getting into what will be or require state state space design techniques but they're not very intuitive for understanding the uh, effects of various parameters on the system without running a bunch of simulations and uh, maybe getting lost in the math so the first thing we want to do and in fact it may be the only thing that we end up doing is a classical control system design and that is just to derive um, a transfer function for each axis roll pitch and yaw and if we're operating nominally from a hover position then we've decoupled all of these gyroscopic effects um, and other nonlinearities um, primarily an extra term in our motor equation which I'll show you and we can get down to a transfer function like this here um, roll pitch yaw this is the Laplace transform so here's our transfer function from cross copter drive inputs so this would be propeller 2 minus propeller 4 is the input and then the output is in this case roll it's symmetrical so it's a symmetrical design assumption here in this paper so this pitch transfer function looks the same and then yaw is similar um, our driving input as we went over last time is is different for a yaw because it's the the difference in the squares of the propellers and then remember we have that drag term instead of the thrust term so we're gonna pull all those get pulled together in these transfer functions but what I want to look at what I want to look at today is just one cross-axis transfer function and we're going to derive these same equations so we're gonna look at a linearized simplified input output model so we can understand the major contributors to the dynamic behavior when we design the control system so in order to do that we assume a level configuration in hover we're neglecting the body gyroscopic effects and we're neglecting the propeller gyroscopic effects and what I drew here somewhat sloppily is just a single cross-body propeller pair pinned at the center of mass, center of gravity, with the arm length of L. So it's sort of like a teeter-totter, and we have one propeller and motor combination on one side, and one on the other, and that single axis is going to drive the output angle theta as a function of the input drives to the two propellers so if we simplify it we have the differential equation um, oh well this should be j theta double dot or i in this case 
I theta double dot equals the sum of torques about the pivot point. Um, turns out then, well, theta, theta double dot equals L over J input. Now the forcing function or the drive input as we know from our last post is the thrust factor times the difference of one propeller's speed squared minus the other across the body. And recall last time we went to great pains to make sure we understood that term B. Now we're going to go way back to the beginning, one of our early posts, where we derive the equation for the differential equation for motor or propeller speed as a function of motor drive voltage, V. Because ultimately, our platform controller, when we ask for a speed out of the propellers, we're going to be commanding the motor speed and the motor speed controller, but really the input is a voltage. I mean, voltage, we could say it's a current. I mean, the motor torque is a function of current, but it's really a, this gets into what, whatever the electronics are that are driving our, our motors, that's our command input. So first off, we've got this constant term in this differential equation and that's a bit troubling uh, for a simplified model. So in the Bubadal paper, Bubadal paper, he tells us, yeah, we're just going to neglect it because it's uh, significantly smaller than B, but rather than take his word for it, we're going we're gonna to see if that's the case. So now we've simplified to d omega dt is uh, that motor propeller speed equation minus the C term, so we got rid of it. Take the Laplace transform of that. We're just stepping through, simplifying. Up. So our input becomes um, this is our commanded input. It's the thrust term times the difference in speeds across the body. And we've got that equation here. We, we've got our speed expressed in terms of the input voltage to the motor. So now we simply plug in. We re, we're just replacing these with our transfer function um, or with our Laplace transform of the input-output relationship uh, voltage to speed. So we're just going to square those. We know it's B and this is just marching through doing the replacement. Here we can pull out the B squared over S plus A, the big B squared over S plus A. And then this is our now motor drive input squared difference across the body. And we'll just let that difference be denoted um, V with the cross through it, just to clean it up. So now, when we go back and we look at our model, so theta double dot, and that's our drive, that's our input, that's our big U, is L over the body moment of inertia on, uh, for that axis times u, so we just take the Laplace transform and we end up with this form here because this is the second derivative, so we've got s squared um, phi of s and again here we're just bringing this down here and our transfer function becomes, moving the s squared down, we've got a denominator term that we'll just denote as a gain k. 
over a double pole at zero and a double pole at our big A. So that's our transfer function from drive voltage difference across the body to angular output for one arm of the quad, uh, one cross arm of the quadrotor.